A woman dances in front of the king but forgets to wear her panties. With a perfect side flip, the bottom of her skirt is revealed. The king's eyes widened and he was completely seduced by her. One small mistake makes her Louis XIV's mistress and access to the ostentatious court of France. I can hardly imagine that not so long ago, she was a dancer busking in the streets. Marquise was born into the poor lower class. Her father raised her to be a dancer who earned money from her seductive body. Her sensual dances drew lines of old men to watch her every day. One day, the famous playwright Maliri passed by with his troupe. He was attracted by Marquis's beautiful dance and stopped for her. Soon the rain began to fall and the crowd dispersed. Marquis continues to dance in the splashing main. Her thin dress is soaked to the skin and her exquisite figure becomes even more attractive. From her ambitious eyes, it is clear that she was not born for this place. Only the dramatist Maliri and the comedian Rene remained to watch her in the rain. Rene expressed his love for Marquise and promised to take her to Paris and put her on a bigger stage. Marquise had always dreamed of becoming an actress in the limelight. Rene's declaration of love really made Marquise's heart flutter. She said yes to his proposal right away. Marquise left her lowly life to join Mahler's troupe. I thought she was about to begin her artistic career, but she screwed up her first performance. Marquise was so nervous about being on stage for the first time that she couldn't speak a word. Tears welled up in her eyes and she felt ashamed of herself. Luckily, her husband, Rene, a seasoned performer, saves her from further mishaps. At the end of the show, Marquise cried in her husband's arms. Malire, because of this mistake, no longer assigned Marquise any roles, but only allowed her to dance on stage during the intermission. She followed the troupe all the way to Paris at a performance at the Royal Theatre. Marquis's warm-up was ignored by the rich and famous, so she danced with the same exuberance she'd used in the streets and caught the eye of the aristocracy. King Louis XIV's brother was even impressed by her dance. He came backstage and asked Marquis to dance for the king's birthday. He was sure that the charming Marquis would win Louis' heart, but the opportunity didn't make Marquis happy, because she has never wanted to be an eye even to dance for the king. She has always wanted to be an actress. So Marquis decided to ask Malira for a role with lines. The unknown actor tried everything to get the part from the director. Au théâtre d'abord, il faut que le public soit confortablement assis. Qu'ensuite, il faut que le noir se fasse. Et qu'enfin seulement, le rideau se lève. Marquis sells her body to get what she wants. But on the second day, Malira only gave Marquis the role of a dancer. Maliri argued that he didn't have time to write her lines when he slept with her last night. Marquise was so upset by this arrangement that she left the rehearsal room. Marquise was about to jump into the river when Racine, the poet, stopped her. Her performance at the theater last night also caught Racine's eye. During Marquise's cries, Racine learns the reason for her sadness. Racine now shares Marquise's lack of noble family and title, and has no place to show his talent. But he reassured Marquise not to give up so easily. Complaining about the injustice of fate is of no use at all, but to be brave and fight against it. With Racine's encouragement, Marquise returned to the rehearsal hall. By chance, King Louis XIV arrived at the rehearsal hall. The crowd rushed Marquise backstage to change into her costume. Marquise was in a hurry to get ready for her performance. The pink dress made her more delicate, and Louis XIV was impressed. He came on stage and danced with Marquise. The cast fears were finally at ease, but then they suddenly realized that Marquise had forgotten her underpants and she was going to do a side flip in front of the king. Maliri thought he was ruined, but Louis XIV summoned him. You have also seen us see the theater as the origin of life. Maliri thought that this performance had earned him the king's favor, but his latest comedy, Tartuffe, was deemed anti-clerical and banned by Louis XIV. And since the poet Racine had been recommended by the queen, so King Louis had Racine's plays performed by Mahler's troupe first. But Racine's plays were tragedies, and the troupe had always performed comedies, so everyone was reluctant to do it. Only Marquise didn't care what kind of theater it was, she just wanted a part with lines. Croyez-vous, monsieur, qu'il y a un rôle pour moi dans votre pièce? Ce serait un bonheur d'entendre mes mots dans votre bouche. <laughs> Sachez que je n'ai jamais joué la tragédie. Pardonnez mon audace, mais je crois bien que si. Marquise and Racine rehearsed together from time to time. Racine taught Marquise how to act with great care. The atmosphere between the two of them became more and more ambiguous. Her husband, Rene, witnessed all this but did nothing, because he knew that this was the way for Marquise to realize her dream. Everything seemed to be destined. Rene had a serious illness and was dying, so he called Racine to his bedside. Je vous la confie. Jurez moi que vous ne lui ferez aucun tort. Elle est si fragile. Jurez. Je le jure. 
Soon after, Rene died on the stage. Marquise was in deep mourning, but the troupe's performances could not be delayed, and Racine kept his promise to make Marquise the heroine of his play and wrote an ancient Greek tragedy for her. The first performance was a triumph with Marquis' flawless interpretation. Even King Louis was moved to tears. Malire, the comedian, who hadn't thought much of her, praised Marquis' performance. His specialty, comedy, was now in decline. Marquis and Racine, as the show gained popularity, became famous and became part of high society. They were often in the king's company. Racine also promised his muse, Marquis, that the role would never be given to anyone else. She belonged only to Marquis. The beauty is having fire cupping. She is suffering from a cold from soaking in the pool to read a poem to King Louis XIV. Marquise insisted on going on stage. Despite her lack of energy, she was afraid that the performance would be jeopardized and that she would be replaced. However, her weak body was unable to hold on and she collapsed on the stage. The theater was thrown into chaos while the actors and actresses did not know what to do without their leading lady. Marie, Marquise maid, stepped forward. Marie already knew the play by heart from what she'd seen and heard every day. Moreover, Marquise would teach Marie how to act during rehearsals. Racine remembered his promise to Marquise that the role would always belong to her. So he didn't promise Marie the role, but the rest of the company said that without a female protagonist, the company would probably go bankrupt. Under great pressure, Racine agreed to let the backup actress come on stage to save the day. Marie, under Marquise's tutelage, did understand the role very well. Her heartfelt performance was also applauded by the audience. It was three days before Marquise woke up again. She was accompanied only by Malire, a forlorn dramatist. After three days of sleep, she had no idea of the changes in the world. Marquise didn't want to believe it when she came to the theater and saw that the role that had been hers had come to life in Marie's body. She was forced to accept the harsh reality. Marquis's faith collapsed and she went backstage and put a box of poison chocolates in her mouth. Then she walked slowly to the stage to the applause of Andro Max Curtain Call. Soon Marquis collapsed with poison. She told her seeing the secret of her pregnancy at the very end of her life. She hid her pregnancy to protect her role from being taken away from her. But there's no point in doing that now. The tragic role in the play no longer belonged to her, so she chose to end her life on the stage she loved so much. Marquise gave her life to a tragic role, 